Broadcasting service. Because we just made up a fake, um, a random uh, payment hash, but um, we now know that this channel at least exists, and we could potentially probe it in other ways as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, like for some of this, uh, you don't necessarily need to know the pub key of the destination, but uh, there is sort of. Um, I don't think we've got that far in LDK. Um, like in theory, you don't need to know the, the final pub key, but in, in our implementation of LDK, you have to know the pub key involved. Um, but yeah, like all of this is just to like show that we're trying to just guess if we if, if one node has a private channel that is associated with a UTXO, and then and if, if that's true, you know, can we figure out who that um, channel is with? And then from there, uh, the goal uh, of this is to eventually be able to like do this at massive scale. And to try to like find all the private channels that we can across the entire Lightning network, and then reveal that information, so we can kind of get insights that we haven't had before um, on the Lightning network. And a lot of this, key, can you explain this 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 channel oh, yeah. ID is kind of a deterministic thing, at least right now. Yeah, channel IDs are all based on UTXO information, so there's a limited amount of UTXOs that could be locked up in a Lightning channel. So then we we can like you know. Um, use on-chain heuristics to figure out what all possible UTXOs could be locked up in a Lightning channel, and we use that to probe. Um, uh, we don't do that today in this project, but um, we could use that to probe the rest of the, you know, at a massive scale, probe, probe the rest of the Lightning network. Yep, that's, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, and, and uh, just at a higher level, like we used uh, LDK, that, um, it was the first time I'd written anything in LDK, I've done Rust before. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a challenge. It feels like there's a lot of uh, fancy types. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on, but it's not always easy like, to pull it out. And obviously, it's you know, also just first time with that code base. Um, so it definitely seems very powerful and very, uh, uh, potentially very powerful tool, but also is um, not the easiest. It's not like the you, my first lightning node kit in, in a sense. You know, there's some. A lot of Galaxy Brain stuff going on in there, and, and also part of that is just properties of being written in Rust. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's a you know some some things that we still had to like kind of fork and change a little bit just to just to uh, you know make it easier for our lives. But in theory, we could like sub and swap different modules of the LDK. Like if we wanted to do something very specific, we can kind of write that ourselves. Um, but we kind of use a lot of the built-in libraries that Rust that LDK does provide as as modules. But um, yeah, all that was pretty fun. Say. Yeah, like for instance, like the whole logic of building a route, that's a completely swappable part of LDK. So LDK has, in fact, we were even able to choose among different scoring mechanisms for how you generate the route. So, yeah, theoretically we just write our own route builder that would also add these bogus hops and, and maybe that's the best approach instead of hacking on some existing code that was maybe harder to change. Whisper Village, quiet peer-to-peer -peer donations. I did not make this slide. Okay. <laughs> Oops. All right. Let's get into it. Lessons learned. Hong Kong Carl kind of problem area we're trying to solve. Uh, I don't know the exact number. Somewhere around a third-ish of Bitcoin donated to the Hong Kong Carl fundraiser, the Bitcoin donation. Uh, a drive for the Canadian truckers was seized by governments. Um, better than the fiat did, but still not, you know, there's some still progress to be made. Uh, lessons, so far as I can tell, number one is don't do centralized collection and disbursement. Even if you can add privacy to it, still, like, just can we figure out a way to donate directly to people. Uh, and lesson two, obfuscate who sends and who receives as much as is possible. Um, some of the lessons to be learned from that, I think, could also apply to the very many Ukrainian refugees and uh, be able to get donations and support directly people who need it. So, um, principles of the solution is, number one, allow recipients to provide whatever information they want. If they want to stay in on, they should be able to. If they want to connect a social account or bio or a video, uh, you know, kind of associated with their address, they should be able to if they want. 
uh, allow the donors to decide how much to give directly to whom. Some people will have higher standards of proof, whatever, rather than trusting one centralized disperser. Uh, and then solution number three, which Dan will describe in a second, use whisper addresses to obfuscate sender and receiver. So, Dan. Super. Super. Sorry. Hi, so whisper addresses are a thing I invented a couple weeks ago. Uh, whisper keys, whisper addresses, and whisper transactions are all new terms you guys are going to have to get used to as we go through this thing. Uh, let's uh, see what they, how they work. <clears throat> whisper addresses are Bitcoin addresses. So it starts out easy, a Bitcoin address you're probably all familiar with. Uh, but these things are created uh, using point addition, which is a cool fancy technique I learned recently when I was playing around with the ECDSA library. Uh, anyway, two or more people have to work together to create these things, and they have some things in common with multisig. But instead of doing multisig where you add signatures, uh, you add private keys together to get whisper, what I'm calling whisper addresses. <coughs> Um, so, if two or more people are going to create one of these things, only one of those people can actually withdraw the money from the whisper address. So it's like you get two people together, they combine two private keys, and it makes a new, you know, Bitcoin address. And only one of them is going to be able to withdraw money from that. Um, and exchanges or governments can't know who it is. This is a property I'll explain in a minute. Uh, the only way to get the whisper address's private key is to add together all of the original private keys together, <coughs> which is cool. Uh, once you have one, then it's really easy to uh, make this make this whole thing private because the people who are trying to send money to one of the guys who is part of the creation process, uh, they just give him their private keys, and then he, once he has all the private keys, he combines them all, and now he can recreate the address. Uh, so that's pretty much how they work. Um, but the cool thing is you can do this like non-interactively. I can put up a public key on a website somewhere, and someone else can come along with their own public key and add it to mine. And they can create a whisper address. And then they can send me the private key, the, the, uh, their private key, and I can combine it with mine. And now I can spend the money, and they can't. Uh, which is cool. But by doing that, we get all sorts of cool properties, like these ones. Oh, no, I'm supposed to just, this, well, I'll, we'll, give the, we'll show you in the demo. Talk about the Bit47 thing while I pull this one. The Meanwhile, I'm going to tell you about Bit47. Bit47 is a Bit, Bitcoin improvement proposal that came out a long time ago, like 2015, I think. Uh, and it is a way of doing things called stealth addresses. Um, it's kind of complex. Uh, it, it, it's based on the same point addition thing that I that I use to do this, where you add keys together. Um, but they they use op returns to share data between uh, participants. Like the guy who's creating the stealth address sends this this op return marker to the original guy, and it puts a lot of data on the blockchain. And I didn't understand what they were doing with the op return part. Like, I was reading through the bit, but I got halfway through and it got to this op return stuff, and I didn't know what they were doing. So I invented my own thing, where instead of putting data in the, on the blockchain in an op return, you, like, email them the special data they need. Uh, and by doing that, I, I save block space, and it's cheaper, and, uh, and it gets some other benefits. Uh, but there's a GitHub here that gives more details about how this works. Uh, so you guys can check that out if anyone wants the link. Uh, you can try to guess it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the link is also at whispervillage.org, and it's uh, right there. So there's the code. Um, thank you. Super. We got this uh, working. Um, so when you visit this website, and this is all Bitcoin testnet, but please don't. I mean, you can. You can. It should work, kind of. Um, we think it works. It works for us. Maybe it'll work for you. Parts your papers. Okay, so when you come here, um, it'll kind of generate you a stealth address that's a unique combination of um, that person's pub key, right? And then this ephemeral pub key that we're throwing down there. Uh, the thing that's not kind of missing from this that has to be done is, is communicating the ephemeral priv key to the recipient. So imagine there could be some little button that generates like a mail to that sends that in an email, or maybe it's a Twitter DM, or the recipient can specify how they prefer to receive that, uh, but that's just done in lieu of the, the, the bit 47 on the chain piece. Um, and then here we kind of preloaded what we used for test, but you know, private key, the, what we're calling the whisper key, that's the ephemeral private key um, that the other person will send you, and then the address you want to withdraw that to, um, and we tested that. For, for now, when you um, do that, if you do it successfully, it'll just give you the um, Transaction hash, which you can do manually, so we you know it alerts it. We copy paste that into the blockchain, you know the whatever, and put the hex, and this was able to work. And for now, we're just hard coding some um, like 500 set things. It's a 
massive overpayment. But um, so this work and anything you want to say in conclusion, or right, then I'll do the actual conclusion. But anything else about that? Uh, yeah. So actually, we we tested the whole thing. We tested the whole flow, and it all worked. Uh, I guess the what we're, what we're going to try to do is make it so that there's some seed words involved. Um, we want we don't want people to have to type in the hex of a private key into this receive field. Like, uh, so I think if we could like have them have seed words and then they they put their seed words in there and it would derive like the first uh, the first private key from there or something like that. That might be better. Um, the whisper key is fine because they're just going to get an email that says this is your whisper key. Doesn't have to be anything human readable. Um, and then their withdrawal address is just going to be whatever their regular Bitcoin wallet they put in a Bitcoin wallet where they want to receive that money at. Uh, and then, yeah, then they hit submit and the money should go directly to their Bitcoin wallet, which is cool. So, uh, yeah, it worked. It worked when we tested it. Uh, we we're going to try to make it prettier eventually with not with replacing the first field with the field with uh, seed words instead. Because people are more familiar with using those. Uh, next steps uh, are what my friend, uh, I don't know your first name, what's your first name? Chris. Chris is going to do, he's going to tell you that. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm working with this uh, new, it's not a non-profit, just like a volunteer group uh, trying to coordinate uh, humanitarian aid to refugees, uh, so we're going to see if we can kind of do a pilot and see if this can actually be. Uh, useful. Um, thank you to Zion for letting us harvest some of the, uh, the the social features, and we'll probably tie this in with the version two Zion app. We'll be launching and announcing more about it at the uh, Miami conference. And then uh, generalizing this, you know, ideally this is something that when there is you know Canadian trucker scenario number two, um, people can just take a code base. Maybe there's a website. Maybe there's something they pulled out from GitHub and build their own version of it. Maybe they slap their own UI on it, and they should just be able to have the question of collection and disbursement with as much uh, privacy as possible baked into on-chain transactions and eventually lightning transactions too and you know get around the whole uh, centralized disbursement problem. That's it. Oh, Thank you. Oh, wait, oh. One more thing. Good. Uh, can I go back to the web browser where we had uh, where you had the send and receive tabs? Click send. I'm going to show you something cool about this. Uh, so we have a whisper address right here that was generated when the site was loaded. And if I refresh this page, I think it's Command R. It's a new one. Like this is a whole new address that got generated. And if I refresh it again, it's a new one. So the reason why that's cool, like an XPub could do the same thing, but with an XPub, you have to like run BTC Pay server or something that can withdraw those, that can draw out each of those. Creating these new addresses is being done in client side JavaScript every time, which is a, which is a really cool property because you don't have to have control over the server to put that on there. Um, and also, another cool thing about that is like, if the police come and what happened with the Hong Kong Cobble thing, the police went to the website where they were collecting donations for those guys, and they got the address because they could see it, and they blacklisted it. You know, they went and said, your exchanges, if you receive money that was in this address, don't cash it out, they confiscate it for us. Um, but if they go to this website, each of these addresses is empty. You know, every time you load this page, even if the police load it, they're going to get a new address that's totally empty. And so they can blacklist those empty addresses all they want. You know? So when you, when you put money in this and then send the guy the, the thing he needs, the, the whisper key he needs to withdraw that money, you know, he's going to be very happy because it's not on anyone's blacklist and, uh, and he gets that money out. So it's great. That's, what, that's why I think these uh, whisper addresses are cool. Thank you. So we are uh, Pleb FM or Pleb.FM. Um, initially, we were the Atlanta Bit Devs crew. Uh, Steve and I came from Atlanta for this weekend. But we met Asher yesterday, or two days ago, uh, and uh, we teamed up to do something cool. Uh, this idea stemmed from uh, going on Hacker News one day and seeing, I think it was Jeremy Rubin's uh, A, or uh, what's it called? It was Stacker News. Um, Ask me anything, AMA. Yeah, it was Jeremy Rubin's AMA, and uh, saw that it was a really cool feature. The, with Stacker News, you could do something really sick. You could basically bid on the questions that you would want to show up at the top of the list. So you could fund using Lightning um, the, the questions that you wanted to answer. So it's like crowdsourcing the best ideas. 
Um, so on that note, we're thinking, okay, how can we use this whole auction thing for something else that uh, could help get the next billion people on lightning? Uh, so enter uh, Pleb FM, uh, a uh, lightning-powered jukebox where it's a crowdsourced uh, auction for the next song we play. So uh, you could, this would be blasted at like a bar or uh, a conference, and uh, you could scan a QR code and uh, submit, or uh, you could select a song and a uh, amount that you want to bid, and uh, pay the lightning invoice, and you'll see it pop up on the leaderboard. Um, if you want to uh, team up with your buddies, you could uh, pick uh, the same song, and then uh, your funds will be aggregated, so uh, you can boost uh, the songs you like at the top of the leaderboard. Um, yeah, yeah, that's here. basically it. Here, move that over here for a second. Hey, I'm Stephen, uh, designer front end dev. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you basically as you explained, you know, you'd see this kind of screen here at a bar or you know whatever Bitcoin meetup uh, you go to. I'm hoping that uh, every Socratic seminar in the country has one of these uh, set up within 12 months because, oh, yeah. like, seriously, I've been to a lot of BitDev's meetups and there's just not enough tasty jams in any of them. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you. So basically, they go to pleb.fm or however that particular meetup wants to brand their instance of the Elden Jude box. And we're going to go oops, to a new tab. Yeah, so this is like 95% of the way there. Like all the logic works in pieces and sure. locally it works really, really well. Uh, yeah. But you can actually go to pleb.fm and play around as we're showing this off. Yeah, but don't play around too hard. But. So basically what we got here is the leaderboard that we just showed would have been on uh, the screen in the bar or at the meetup, right? They scan the QR code or go to pleb.fm and then they end up at this mobile website right here. So we're going to search for a song. So um, I don't know, Texas. Okay, there we go. Do that. Uh, is that good or like what do you want? Do you want some like hip or something like that? What should we build? Uh, I said two bucks. We may not have that. I mean, I got, I got 50 cents. Do we have any 50 cents? Yeah. Oh, All right, in the club. <laughs> So, um, how much do we want to bid on this? Anything? 50 cents. 50 cents? 100 cents? It's got to be less than a million. 50 cents. 50 cents. Okay. So, I'm going to check out. Okay. So, this is running on mainnet, so this just generated a Bolt 11 invoice for me for 50 cents. So, I'm going to copy this invoice right here. Give me one moment, and I am opening up Phoenix Wallet right here. I'm going to go to send. And I'm going to paste for my clipboard because I got them all linked. I got a 50 cent uh, invoice up here. I'm going to pay it. It is now in the pending in Phoenix. And it is sent. And now the payment is paid. So, you know, we're still kind of working on the code for the leaderboard a little bit, but the idea is, is that the song that I would show up in here shows up with the price. Um, you know, it's fetched from the server and actually has the prices on a sorted and order of price. And so like some, you know, interesting features we want to ship is like uh, this idea that, um, you know, uh, if like two people want to kind of collaborate for a song, you know, if you really wanted uh, to, you know, boost Ghost Riders in the Sky, you know, you could bid on the same song and then bump it up in the queue. So people can kind of collaborate together and get their song to the top of the queue. Yeah, we also thought like we could put like a, an initial idea was that we would have people uh, put like a pseudonym as they're entering their invoice and then there could be like a Twitter feed on the side so you can see like an active history of like the new, uh, the new bid. So uh, if you're in like a big ass conference and uh, you want to see your name or a funny name or something, uh, you'd be able to do that. Hey Asher, what do you think? You got anything to... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's super cool to bring uh, uh, like Bitcoin projects to like IoT devices and physical spaces. Because it's just like it's a good talking point, and uh, it's a good way to to show what you can do with the technology. Because it's like um, you know, carrying around like a roll of quarters for your jukebox at your local diner is kind of annoying. So <laughs> it's like a more portable and scalable version of that. Um, plus, uh, it's really cool to just develop all the tools that we have now in the ecosystem. Like Voltage is super helpful for this. So we actually built a testnet version, and then had time to deploy it on mainnet as well. Uh, so that was cool. Um, and yeah, this. Guys from Atlanta are awesome, so follow Atlanta Bit Devs on Twitter. Woo. Woo. This guy, this guy is awesome. He he just he he just learned React this weekend, and he connected the React to Voltage. So. Well, yeah.
You're awesome, dude. So I think that's uh, really about it. But yeah, we just want to see you know more people doing uh, stuff with uh, Lightning. Uh, you know, just kind of everyday stuff to you know make a kind of daily spending uh, on Lightning a reality, and you know make it so that when people say, "Well, you can't spend your Bitcoin on anything," you can say, "Well, actually." Yeah, and, and maybe uh, another closing remark is, is that there's like some of the smartest people in the, uh, in the world in this room right now, and uh, it seems like uh, the 95 percent of our focus is on pushing it tomorrow. Uh, but maybe if we if we take 10% uh, of our time to slow down and, and focus on uh, the other 99%, and so just how can we get them uh, into the future as fast as possible? Um, I think if we work together, we can do some really good things. So, honestly, awesome. Right? Oh, nice. There it is. Better. All right. So it's pretty simple. Uh, this is Discord. If you're not familiar with it. And uh, Discord is pretty cool in that uh, they have some simple integrations that they allow you to do with their interface. So uh, one of the ways that you can tip on Discord is you can actually take a message that you like. I like this message. And I can just click apps, send tip, sending sats. Select an amount, say a thousand sats, and it will generate QR code and an invoice. And where is my phone? Does anybody want to scan this, by the way? Testnet. <laughs> yeah, it's on testnet, but uh, being that we work too, you just want to actually get anything. No. <laughs> so this go away. I was just taking a picture. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, got an unexpected error. No, of course we. Let me try again. Unexpected error.
So our project, call it SPADS, Spontaneous Ads. Uh, basically key payments with an attached ad schema to it. Uh, the inspiration for this came from uh, me not being on Facebook anymore, but like I low key missed the targeted ads. <laughs> because they actually did a lot of the discovery of like finding new products and stuff for me, so I didn't have to like look around. Like, I actually kind of like the ads, not gonna lie. <laughs> so, uh, with Lightning, you know, you can kind of get paid a key send payment pushed to you, and it can include an ad in it. And so a different model could be where you basically get paid to receive the ads. You cut out the Facebook, right, and the other aggregators in there, and then you kind of uh, can just get paid and look at ads. Or it doesn't have to necessarily be ads. It could be anything. But the idea was basically like a news feed. So like you can put this on your own roll or something like that and start just getting paid with the ads. Uh, and so down here, I've made, I mean, the site is lnspads, L-N-S-P-A-D-S dot com. And you can, oh, Ben just said an ad. Let's see where it goes. The Ben's Twitter. So the basic idea is there's a key send payment and uh, in the TLB records, there's a JSON schema, so like something I can show, like Stacker News. I can pick a URL. Let's see, Stacker News has a picture. Yes, we'll take this. Try a new URL. Stacker News, right? Yeah. Sure. Let's say. Boom. So basically, this data here is sent with the TLB record um, using key 85, 5555. Just kind of made that up, picked that up. Hopefully, no one else is using that. And if this is the generated LNCLI command, and blast it out, and it should pop up here. Boom. And so you could eventually make like different types of ad formats, like image ads, uh, link ads, stuff like that. So if you want to give it a try, I don't know if anybody else Ben did, but if you just go to lnspags.com, fill this in, and uh, you take an LNCLI and ship it. So that's the uh, basic idea. Yeah. Who here knows what a DLC is? All right, we're doing better. Um, so for those who don't know, <laughs> ben, has, ben has been on a personal mission to e to educate this audience for about two years now. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, let's do a moment. First time was like zero hands, so I'm proud of you all. Um, so for those, for those who don't know, a DLC is a way to do like Bitcoin smart contracting. Basically, you lock up once in a multi-sig, and then the way to get it out, you have an oracle sign what happened in the real, real world, so you can use this to bet on something like the Super Bowl, or you can do something like the Bitcoin price, or wherever the hell you want, and, um, yeah. A cool thing about it is that it's peer-to-peer, -peer and, uh, you don't have to trust a third party, and, uh, the, uh, we trust one third party to, to basically broadcast an event in the world, like Bulls Beat the Pistons, and, uh, yeah, but they don't know you bet. They don't know what's happening, they're just sort of yelling out, uh, into the, Ether and so it's private in that way as well. Yeah. So it allows for a lot of uh, really like private things. So you know things like betting on the election isn't totally legal, and um, but you could do that with us or um, anything like that. And the problem with DLCs right now is there's really only like one or two wallets. Um, there and like no real mobile wallets besides Atomic Finance, but you guys have a niche use case. So we wanted to build a like a foundation for a DLC mobile wallet, and um, something that would be really nice. To, oh, for this is uh, Greenlight. And what Greenlight is is a project that Blockstream does that lets you like basically run a 
lighting out on their server, but the private keys are on your phone. So um, the reason we want this for DLCs is because DLCs use the exact same messaging as Lightning. So we could use um, their server to handle all of our messaging and finding our UTXOs and all that. And then just have the private keys on our phone so we can um, still you know, not uh, be custodial. And um, it's really finish that. So it's really nice because um, talking from one phone to another is actually a total bitch with networking issues because um, there's all this NAT stuff or you can do like a direct connection with like Bluetooth, but you know, if you're not in the same room, that sucks. So with the uh, green light, you just have these two servers on Amazon that uh, block your phones for you, and they talk to each other and then send it back to your phone. So you get this nice uh, UX flow there. And the other thing about, uh, so this is like an SDK, you know, a software development kit. Uh, uh, you want this to run everywhere. So uh, the other tool we're using is Rust DLC. It's an implementation of an language called Rust. It's extremely portable. You can run it in a browser or uh, iOS, Android, desktop. Any, I mean, even on like a little IoT device or something, you can run it anywhere. Uh, so that's also really appealing from this like SDK perspective of building infrastructure. So the goal of us was basically to merge these two projects, Rust DLC and Greenlight, and we got kind of there. Um, so basically to do that, we need to fill out these like 10 functions, and um, all of them work, work but one, just sign transaction. It turns out Greenlight can't sign PSBTs yet. Um, so I, I asked Christian Becker when that's coming. It's in a month. So in a month we'll be able to finish this project. But um, yeah, but we can. I can run. Oh, run. Well, there's also the problem that it can't also do the peer-to-peer. -peer. Oh yeah. So so yeah. So they don't have support for the sending the messages as well yet. So. Um, with the next release that'll be, um, we can send and then the receive, they'll do, need to do a small custom thing in there too. So maybe in a month we could send out a DLC and then maybe in three months we can receive one. So you know, this is kind of building the foundation, but yeah. So another interesting thing about using uh, Greenlight uh, and combining DLCs with Lightning is like, like, for example, right now, if you want to do a bet, you need two on-chain transactions per bet, one to set up the bet and one to close it. Right, so that's costly in terms of fees uh, and also time. Right, like if you want to bet on the noon football game and then the 3 p.m. football game, you, you can't really do that uh, if you got to wait 20 minutes to get the you know the transaction confirmed. But uh, if you're in a Lightning channel, maybe you could you know close out your bet and uh, you know, create a new bet instantly. Uh, and so this is this would be like the second iteration would be once you get we could get like an on-chain. Uh, UX working, you could do a, a lightning-based uh, experience where all, like, you, you just have one uh, channel with your uh, the other side of the bet, like the person you're making bets against, and you could do infinite bets there for two uh, on-chain transactions. So yeah, so that's the end goal, but we didn't totally get there. We, um, we got it, so I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but we were able to generate a node on uh, Yes, I mean, I guess the, the yeah, the, the, the cool thing here is we kind of helped uh, Greenlight figure out what they should build next, uh, which is kind of important. Like, I think generally in the Bitcoin ecosystem, we have some fantastic engineers building things, and they're not always exposed to like market use cases, uh, so they don't always maybe work on the most uh, important thing. So hopefully, we help them a little bit. Being like, hey, this would be a good use case, uh, and and they're like, yeah, we agree, and it's not that hard to do. So. Uh, so that's kind of the takeaway at this point. But the, the long-term goal would just just be an open source project that's built sort of slowly and like you know pull requests are welcome and you know hopefully other walls can be built on top of this when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah, like my kind of end goal for this is like, you know, if I want to build like the original reason I did this because um last hackathon we built the Smash Bears uh, DLC Oracle. It was like, well, I don't want everyone showing up with a laptop and having to like run a full note on their laptop to bet on the video game for like three dollars. So it'd be nice if you, expect, you show up to the place, download an app, and you can gamble. But um, we don't totally have that yet. So with this, we can make like, this Smash Bros. DLC um, 
mobile app, but you know, Justin was talking about building like a sports book. That would be can you make that on top of the same foundation we built here? And another thing with the uh, uh, Smash Bears idea is like maybe since it's an SDK, Blue Wallet can integrate it, right? Uh, something like that. I mean, it wouldn't quite work because that's not how they don't use Greenlight. But I mean, if you touch something like that, you could have a, a wallet you already use uh, will work, which would be great. So you don't have like a specific lightning node for every single one of the applications that you use, which is kind of the direction things have been going at this point. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs>
1 million SAS for DLC Greenlight. All right, all right. So before we get to today's best overall,